Well, hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Nape with Love. My name is Heather, and I can't believe it, but today is Friday, October 29th. That means just in two days we've got Halloween, so I'm all dressed for Halloween. I've got my little candy corn earrings, I've got my little witch's pin, and of course I got this really cool shirt I found, and it's got the Halloween gnomes on it. So I'm all ready for Halloween now. I was going through my Halloween stuff and I had bought this piece of material a couple years ago at a secondhand shop for just a couple dollars. So I just put it this way so it's not upside down, but it's got like the whole Halloween theme stuff all over it. And I decided to cut it in half and I'm gonna make two cushions out of it. Uh, they'll be measured about 18 by 20, I believe. I not quite sure the full size of this material. I just kind of fold it in half until I can make sure I could get two good sized cushions out of it. And then I just cut the, cut that in half so I can make two cushions out of it, I guess. Uh, I just did a rough measurement. I'm not sure which way I cut. I don't know if I cut it lengthwise or horizontal or vertical, whichever direction. I don't know if I cut with the grain, against the grain. I don't know any of that. I just know I had an odd piece of material. So I just uh, cut it in half so I can make two cushions out of it. So first thing I got to do is I've got to iron it because it's been folded for quite a few years so it's all creased. So I'm just gonna move my camera over so you can see me see how I iron. Okay so I've got my two pieces of material here. I'm just gonna lay it uh, right side down on the ironing board. I've got my iron already pre warmed up. And this is cotton. I don't have, I'm not using the steam on this one because I'm not sure how this material handle. I mean, the side said it was cotton, but it has some glitter um, strands going through it. I'm not a sewer and I don't know much too much about material, so I'm not going to use the steam, but I just need to get some of the um, creases where it had been folded to be ironed out. That's all I just want to do. I'm just starting from the center and I'm just going straight up and then from the center and I'm just going straight down. I'm just doing some quick easy little presses here just going straight up and straight down. I'm just trying to make sure it's all nice and smooth just trying to get those creases out as much as possible. To move the fabric a little more so I can get the next chunk of it done. Especially like right here where I can see that it's all the corners where it's kind of been turned, oops, uh, bent inside itself. So I know I'll be stitching along there, but if I can get a nice smooth edge, then it makes it so much easier to. Show pin and sew a straight line if your material is flat. So I'm just going to continue doing this one and I will do the second one the same way, just kind of ironing, like especially anywhere where I can see the creases. So like I said, I bought this piece of material I think like three years ago at a secondhand store, probably like maybe 50 cents or a dollar. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it. I'm just going to keep doing this. So I'm just going to continue uh, ironing this piece and I will con then I will iron the second piece and then I will be uh, right back. You don't need to be watching me iron for about 10 minutes, but so I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back. I've got it all ironed so there's no more creases. So now this pattern seems to go this longest way up and down, and I got the shortest going. Uh, I remember the, the longest pattern goes vertical. The shortest one goes horizontal. So I had to stop to think about which direction went which. Sometimes I just get them mixed up. So what I'm gonna do? So for my cushion, I'm just gonna put this together. So I'll have three sides to stitch. So that'll be my cushion will look like that. Or like this. So be stitched at the bottom or at the top. It's going to be however you put the cushion out to get the three sides. So I'm just going to 
fold it in half and I'm just gonna put the right sides together. So this is be approximately 18 by 20. So just a piece of material here. I'm just trying to get this straight. Just I don't have a big broom right here, I thought. I was just wondering if I measured wrong. Did I cut crooked? Well, this material is also an odd chunk. It could have just been cut crooked, but there, if I just line up that, so I'll make sure it's not working. Okay, just gonna line up these corners here. Just gonna grab a clip and clip the corners together. Just gonna clip these corners together. And then just lift it up and just kind of let it fold down, making sure that it's all nice and smooth. Seems a little crooked. There, that's a lot better. I'm just going to pin this, not pin, I'm just going to clip this part here and this one over here just so it's not going to come un not undone, I guess, just so it stays straight so it's not going to be crooked. So I see right up here, got a problem here. Just, okay. there. just gonna pin or just clip this back together. Just didn't quite have it right. Just gonna clip back at this corner. I'm just gonna clip back at this corner, and I'm gonna clip once in the center too, so it just stays straight for me. And now I'm just gonna stitch up the three sides. So I'm just gonna start at the one side. I'm just gonna go all the way one side and then down the longer side. And then when I get to the third side, I'm gonna leave a gap at the bottom. I'm not quite sure. Maybe two or three inches. I'll figure it out as I start sewing. I'm just gonna move the pins and the clips out of the way. I'm just bring my sewing machine in. I'm just gonna start stitching. I hope that I reach the foot pedal too. to get this lined up so I can do this easier. I'm just going to move the clip to the top so I don't get it caught in my machine. It's not going to work. I'm just going to put a little pin here because just, just put a pin right here just so I can hold these together because i got to move the clip. There, so I don't want to get the clip caught in my machine because I did that the other day when I was making something. There. I didn't wreck my machine, but I was so worried that I was going to the way that the uh, pin or the way that the clip went under the foot pedal, and I was just so worried that I heard a funny clank and I thought I broke my machine or the clip. I didn't break either. I'm glad about that, so I'm just going to stitch straight. Oops. And I've already got it caught. Loose thread. Oops. Okay, I'll be right back because I just got this all caught under my machine. So I'll be right back when I get this extra thread and out of here and I've got to re-thread my machine because the thread just snaps. So I'll be right back. All right, I got my uh, machine all fixed. I got re-threaded. I got the extra thread that got pulled underneath all out and I'll try this again. <laughs> snapped again. I don't know what's happening with my machine lately. It seems like every few days when I'm trying to sew stuff lately my machine just 
this thread just keeps snapping. I guess I'm going to switch out and get a different spool of thread and I'll re-thread my machine and I'll try it again. So I'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, I don't know if my thread is just cheap or what, but I had to go with the third spool and it's not breaking on me. I had to test it out. So, I don't know, it just seems to all this extra thread's coming out of the machine and it's all getting caught and then my needle or my thread is just snapping. So, I don't know, I bought this thread from Walmart. I don't know if that if that means anything. If Walmart thread is just really that cheap, it feels and looks like the stuff from the dollar store. So I thought if I buy it from Walmart, it should be better quality than the dollar store. But maybe it's the exact same, and I'm paying like you know five dollars, almost five dollars for a spool of thread, and I should just be buying just the dollar fifty from the dollar store. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. Next time I'm at Walmart, I'm going to look at their thread and see what it says, like what the company brand is, and check the dollar store and see what their brand is, because I know they're all made in China. So, I don't know. It seems to be working now, so I'm just going to continue sewing these three open sides. So I'll just, the material just getting caught on the table here. Now I saw this technique, I've actually never done it, but they put the needle in halfway, lift the pressure foot up and turn the material to go the next side. I just need to see if it actually works. And then you put this down and you should be able to just continue sewing. And so far it seems to be looking like it will work. My little pieces here aren't lined up again. through and then turn the material and then put the foot back down. She seems to be working really good. I just saw a video a couple days ago of this lady doing that sewing so I thought I'll have to try it next time I'm sewing. see how big of an opening I'm going to keep in here to, to stuff. Let's see. Three inches. You should actually do this before you, you know, before you start sewing, but I forgot to mark where I was going to, so about there. I'm just going to stitch down so that gives me about a three inch opening to be able to turn this the right side and to stuff it. Here, these clips 
those out of my way. Snip off this extra thread. I'm just going to get the opening here. I'm just going to start to pull this material through the opening. And hopefully I've got a good size cushion. I've got all the seams stitched. So far it seems good. Got it. Just one more corner to find here. Okay. I've got my nice little cover here. I can be a nice big pillow when I get it all stuffed. Oops, I've got an opening here that got unstitched. Kind of like where the material kind of went a little crooked. There's my opening. So I'm just gonna I've got this fix this one corner, but so far all the other edges all seem really good. Oops, just gonna find this corner here. Pull this corner out. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other cushion. I'm just going to go and start stitching the three sides together and when I've got that done and I'm ready to stuff then I will be right back. Okay well I was just getting ready to pin this. This had this side of it had this long strip, this white strip so I cut it off. I'm not a sewer but I'm assuming that these dots here are the colors that are in this piece of fabric and then this of course would be the uh, long like name of it and stuff so it's tk68-30-199 it's a spooky night copyright red original designs exclusive to fabric land fabric bill and 100 percent cotton so i don't know if anybody likes this pattern if you can order this in or not i'm not sure like i said i'm not a sewer i don't buy um stuff from fabric land i do go there occasionally to buy a few things here and there, but I usually just use whatever scrap material I have for my basic sewing around the house. But so I'm same thing. I'm just gonna fold these corners up and I'm just gonna clip these in place and just sew this just like I did the other one. And when I get this one sewed and turned the right side and I'm ready to stuff, I will be right back. All right, I got the second one all done. Now I've got this. Just gotta find the opening. So I got. Uh, I'm using a chopstick, but you could use um, anything as long with a, a little bit of a pointed edge. And I'm just going to go make sure. Oops, not under my sewing machine. Just gonna go along and just to get it into the corners, just so I got a nice corner, a nice pointed where the corner is. Or I could use, I guess, a uh, knitting needles or anything. I've got chopsticks. I'm just going to go to each of the corners here and just poke out each of the corner. Again, so you get that nice sharp point. And one more corner here. Just got to do that. So now this one's done. I will do the same to the other one, but I'm going to just get this one ready to fill or to stuff. Got a little bit of loose thread sticking out. I'm just going to trim that off. I hope that's not going to make this. No, that wasn't part of the, that wasn't the thread I was sewing with. That's the thread from um, the fabric for the material itself. I'm just going to make sure I've got all the corners nice and neat. And there's my opening. So I've got my cushion. 
cushions. Now I'm just going to get my filling. Now I was at Walmart the other day, so I bought two of these pillows that they sell. It's just the standard size pillows, and they're about four dollars each. So I bought two of them. Should be some nice stuffing in here. As I found that when I was at Walmart the other night, it was like $15 for just a small little bag of the pillow stuffing, or I could buy a pillow for $4. So I bought two pillows. I'm just going to cut this pillowcase open, and I'm just going to grab a nice big chunk of this, and I'm just going to start to stuff it. I may need to make my hole a little bit bigger we'll have to see but that's all I'm gonna do is just get this in here and then of course once it's in here I do have a way of making it softer and nicer so it's not in all these little chunks like this I might have to make the hole a bit bigger but I'm so I'm gonna do is I'm just going to keep uh, stuffing this cushion with this cushion I guess basically just taking the insides of one cushion and stuffing another cushion with it. I'm just going to get my hand in here. I'm just going to get it all over here to the corner just so I can see how thick I would like it. But you get it in the corner and you just kind of flatten it out and pull it with your hand. You just kind of get a nice little bunch in the corner like that. I'm just going to keep working with it because you don't want it lumpy. So I like it. I'll figure out how puffy I want it as I start stuffing it. I like to get the stuffing in all three of the corners, not the corner I'm working with, but the other three corners, just so I, it just makes it easier for me to know, well, how much stuffing I have in the corners and how thick do I want to make it. So as I do this, I'm just going to keep working on it like that. I'm just going to shake it every once in a while. And you can also just, just roll it. You just kind of roll it between your hands like this. This is also how I fluff my pillows for on our beds and too. Just kind of, you know, re you know, redistribute the filling. So that's all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue stuffing this pillow until I've got it, you know, a lot thicker. And the, or until I've got it the thickness I would like it. I can't speak tonight. It's like it's getting to almost eight o'clock at night, so I'm just getting kind of tired. It's been a long day. So. Guess pretty soon I'll be leaving to go get my daughter from work, and then I can run and do Starbucks because I haven't had coffee yet today. So that'll be nice to just quickly get to Starbucks. So I'm just gonna quickly finish stuffing this, and then I will be back when I've got the pillows more stuffed and I'll show you how to finish them. Okay, I've got both the pillows uh, mostly stuffed. It took about one and a half of those pillows to stuff both of these. So I've got a few gaps where I'm probably going to add a little more stuffing as I just work with this. Set this one aside. No, set this one aside. That one needs a little more stuffing. This one, it's I like the way it is. I need a little more in the corner that I still have to stitch up. I'm just going to bring my camera down so you can see it's good thickness here. It's hard, probably hard to tell, but that's a pretty good thickness of a pillow. So I'm just going to, oh, sorry, I'm just going to go like this. I'm just going to wiggle it between my fingers, like just kind of rolling my fingers like this with the pillow between it, trying to get the, all this stuff right into the seams. It sometimes helps if I just hold it with my between my knees. Just roll this up so you get it right into the corners and right into the seams and that way I can tell if it needs a little more fluffing or a little more stuffing in the corners but I think that edge looks good so I'm just going to do it with all the rest of these just, just fluff it into the just kind of squishing it into the corners and then I'm just going to roll it out and just kind of press it in and then just give it a couple little tugs in the center just to fluff it up I think it looks really good now. Turn it this way so you can see the front of it like that. So it's a pretty good sized pillow. Now I'm just going to hand stitch this up. I'm going to say I 
think I remember how to do the invisible stitch. I'm going to try. I believe I remember how. So I'm just going to grab my needle and thread. I just had the right here. There's the thread and there's a little jar, there's a little container here with needles. I'm just going to find the right one. gonna have to just pause for a second and figure out where I put my needle okay I had to repair my uh, daughter's Halloween costume so it was with the thread I'm just gonna cut off a little piece of thread here so I found a new technique to uh, thread the needles. It actually works really good. So you just kind of fold the thread in half. And using this, I don't know, for some reason it's just so much easier to just kind of thread it. Wish I would have learned this technique a lot long, you know, a lot longer than now, but And I still, I don't know how people are able to tie knots with just, you know, between two fingers. I have to do where I hold the two pieces of thread and I actually have to tie the knot. I don't trust my thread or knots when I tie the thread. I always do about three or four knots. And I always try to make sure they really line up on top of each other. Like that. And now I'll find where I had the opening here and if I do this right let's see if I can move this up a little so I'm gonna start I gotta turn this cushion this way I'm right handed so I gotta have it on this side of me I think if I stitch on here and then I do a stitch on this side the inside seam, yep. And then inside seam. If I pull that up, do I have it right? Oh, I've got it right. Oops. And then here. Yeah, I'm actually doing it. Oops, I went. Didn't need to go through both layers of material. So I'm trying to keep it on the just the piece of material that's on the inside. Try to keep the stitches kind of hidden. I haven't done this for a long time. I haven't done these invisible stitches for a long time. I kind of forgot how to do it. Pull it tight. Like that, and it's actually except I kind of messed up a couple little stitches back there. My first couple, I kind of just went through both layers of the material. So just do the piece of material that's it's folded in. And on the other side, just think a piece of material that's folded inside. It's a little tricky. I'm trying to make it so you guys can see, but it means I'm kind of holding it kind of not where I can see. I'm just going to keep stitching this. It's not perfect. That's okay. I can always, you know, if this doesn't hold, I can always just undo these stitches and stitch it up better later. Try not to prick your finger with the needle, it hurts. Just look at another little stitch here, and this time I'm going to start to knot it. Just make a little knot, make sure it pulls down inside. It may not have, I think the knot is going to be on the outside, but that's okay. I'm going to do oops, one more. What did I do? I'm 
going to do one more here. Yeah, my knot's going to end up being on the outside for some reason. That's okay. It's just in the corner here. Like that. But I've got the invisible stitch done. For the most part. I mean, there's a couple little stuff where I made a mistake and I kind of went through both layers of the material but it's for the most part I've got the invisible stitch done which I haven't done the invisible stitch probably since I was in home ec in the early 90s so I think that's okay now I'm just going to push this stuffing into this corner not so hard because I don't want to wreck where I had stitched I'm just going to go like this I'm just going to get this smoothed it out again, just fluff it up, just, just about pulled the stitching out, I pulled a little too hard, but there we go, I've got the one done, now I'm just going to stitch up the opening of the other one, the other one still needs just a little bit more stuffing in the one corner, I'm just going to move that finished one out of the way, this one just needs a little more stuffing up there, that's better. Got lots of stuffing there. I've got the stuffing in this corner. I'm just pulling it down. And I'm going to try that invisible stitch on this one. Should be able to do it a lot better now that I've actually done it one time. I just got to where did I put the sewing needle? I just moved it. Oh. Uh, sorry about that. One of my kids just texted me, so I just had to see who it was and what they wanted. I'm just going to grab some thread here. Scissors. I just bought these little clippers. Uh, little thread clippers. I just bought them the other day, so this is be my second day of using them. So I'm just going to do this again. Like I said, I just learned this technique to threading needles. So you just take it, you just make a little loop. And just kind of pull it, I guess, more to like a point. And then, for some reason, just so much easier to push through. The next thing I want to learn how to do is how you tie the knot with, you know, between your two fingers. That would be really interesting to figure that one out. I've been trying that one for probably close to 30 years. I still haven't figured that one out. So I just do this the standard tying the knot and looping your fingers around and pulling the thread through. I do about three or four of those knots and I try to keep the knots on top of each other so I get a larger knot. Like I said I probably, I know I probably over tie my knots but I don't trust my sewing capabilities sometimes, so I'd rather be safe than having all my thread unwind, or, un or my stitching undo, I guess. I'm just going to try this. I can just try this again and see if I can figure this, do a better job on this invisible stitch. That's better. I'm just going to make sure I'm just staying on just the one piece of the, the fabric that's going to be you know, inside. And then I'm going to pull it. If it pulls it, but i got to make sure I pull here and there. There, that's better. I see what I did the other one. I guess I wasn't pulling tight enough to get the thread to pull tight. Okay. Probably been close to, let's see, it's probably been close to 30 years or since I've had to do, you know, sewing like this. These invisible stitches. Oops, let me just move the camera a little closer. Let's see. You can see what I'm doing. Okay. I've got the material here I need to stitch, so I'm just lifting up the little flap that I've got here, and I'm just putting the thread through 
that side and then pulling over on this side and putting the thread on that side and then just holding the material and pulling the thread so I get the stitches inside. So It's been a long time since I've done this. I've totally forgot how to do it. It would have saved me a lot of work fixing my kids bedding and clothing if I could remember how to do it. There, so I got that cushion done. I'm just going to do a couple little stitches here with my knots. Like I said, I'm not a sewer, but I just do a few basic easy things around the house. And I'm just going to put these scissors away. I just stabbed my finger. Okay, so I'm just going to push this stuffing into this corner again. I'm going to be careful because I know I've stitched it. So there we go. Get this one done. I'm just going to give it a quick little fluff. Just make it all nice and puffy. Got this one done. So I got one and two. So I got two Halloween decorative pillows done. Didn't take too long. I mean, I had to didn't take me too long to do all that from start to finish. I did go pick my daughter up from work, so I did get my Starbucks. So, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. And I look forward to seeing everybody in my next video. Bye.